Hello there, this is Marisa Del Savi. I'm a teacher at Walt Whitman High School in Bethesda, Maryland, and we are here today to address a concept application question, free response question for AP Psychology. Let's get right to it. For all of the questions that you see on your AP Psychology exam, you will be given some directions that you should read. And this one we have Adam, who is in his 70s, has lived in a large city all of his life. When he retired from his job as a university professor, Adam moved to an isolated cabin in the forest to write his autobiography. And in part A, you're going to explain how each of the following might help Adam as he writes his autobiography. You know, I want to make sure when we address these four different concepts that we're going to talk about how they help Adam write his autobiography. In part B, we're going to explain how each of the following might relate to a chapter in Adam's book about the time he won an award in elementary school for writing. And again, we'll want to make sure we address all three of these concepts to part B. In a concept application FRQ, it is important to think about giving a definition or a general explanation of a concept. And while it's not necessary, it can be quite helpful. What you will absolutely have to do, and it's essential to earn the point, is to provide a specific example that applies the concept to the prompt. And finally, if you do provide a definition or explanation of the concept, just make sure your example doesn't rely on that definition. Um, it's essential that you earn the point by making sure that you ask yourself the question, would somebody with no psychology background whatsoever understand the concept based upon my example or based upon the example that you give. Let's move on to part A, where Adam in his 70s has lived in a large city all of his life. He retired from his job as a university professor, and he's moved to an isolated cabin in the forest to write his autobiography. Explain how each of the following might help Adam as he writes his autobiography. And the first one we have is a mood congruent memory. I'm gonna start off with a definition of mood congruent memory. Mood congruent memories are events more easily recalled when people are in the same emotional state as they were in when they first encoded the memory, okay? All my definitions I'm going to give to you today are correct, and then we're going to move on to giving a specific example that applies the concept to the prompt. I've decided to put Adam in a happy mood. So let's take a look at how I linked that, gave, gave me a specific example that relates to the prompt. Adam is in a happy mood when he sits down to write his autobiography. So Adam is more easily able to recall and then write about many events from his life that he encoded when he was happy, such as having his first book published. Okay, I have a nice specific example of a happy memory and mood congruent memory. And I ask myself, does my example rely on the definition? It does not. So I've, I've met the criteria of the example does not rely on the definition. I can tell from talking about Adam, whether or not the person should understand what a mood congruent memory is. We move on to the same part of the prompt and now we're going to address incentive theory. The definition for incentive theory explains that people are motivated through some external rewards such as money or praise. So Adam's writing his autobiography and we're gonna to need to find a specific example that applies incentive theory to this prompt. Now I chose to say that Adam's being paid to write his autobiography, so he is motivated to finish it. I've given a very specific example of an incentive. Okay. Now, the question is, does, do I know based upon what I just wrote here, Adam being paid to write his autobiography, do I know what an incentive is from that? And it turns out I do. This example does not rely on the definition. Okay, I did a good job making sure that I gave a very specific example of an incentive. You don't have to write a definition, as I said. So if I wrote this, Adam is being paid to write his autobiography. According to the incentive theory, that payment will motivate him to finish it. Would someone with no psychology background understand the concept based on my example? And the answer here is absolutely yes. So no definition is provided, but this response still scores. I use the term incentive theory. I underline it to make sure that the person reading it can take notice of it. And I explained that an incentive is being paid to write his biography and it will motivate him to finish it. That's how it's gonna help him as he writes it. Habituation is our next term. We will define habituation. It happens when we get used to and then ignore a frequently repeated stimulus. I'm ready to write a specific example. But before I do, I want to make sure we clarify what habituation is versus another frequently confused concept. Habituation is conscious. In other words, it's when our response to a stimulus diminishes, okay, it lessens. 
And it's not that I couldn't notice it. It's just that I kind of ignore it. So a good example would be something audible. Like if I hear a lawnmower outside, eventually I'll just get used to that lawnmower and ignore it. Now, this is very different than sensory adaptation. And you might recall from your teacher's examples, like if you jump into a cold pool and then you no longer feel cold after a while, you get adapted to it. How is that different? Well, with sensory adaptation, it's involuntary. It's happening at those, that sensory receptor level on our skin. Now, it's not just that. It could be odors like smelling tuna fish a sandwich in a room. And then a few minutes later, you don't smell it anymore. But if I ask you, do you smell it? You'd be like, I don't smell it. Whereas if I asked you if you heard the lawnmower, you're like, oh, yeah, I still hear the lawnmower, but I'm ignoring it. So the example I'm going to give for habituation, that specific example, is that there's sound on the rain roof distracted, sorry, the sound of rain on the roof distracted Adam, but he eventually was able to ignore the noise and focus on his writing. That is a very specific example that does not rely on the definition. So again, we do not have to use a definition. I could just simply write the sound of a woodpecker outside initially distracted Adam from writing, but he eventually became habituated to the noise and was able to ignore it and finish his book. Notice here that somebody without any psychology background would learn what habituation is from this particular example, for sure. And again, we did not have to provide a definition. Self-efficacy, defining self-efficacy. It is our feeling of confidence in being able to complete a specific task. Well, what is the task that Adam has to complete? Well, he has to write his autobiography. Now, if I say Adam has self-efficacy and this helps him write his autobiography, what's missing here? What's missing here is a specific example. I simply defined self-efficacy. Okay. And then what I did, I just parroted the prompt. We don't want to do that. I don't want to just say, okay, here's my definition of self-efficacy. Self-efficacy helps a writer's autobiography. Well, sure, we know that, but you have to give me a specific example. So let's rewrite this and say Adam is confident he can complete his autobiography and that will push him to overcome his writer's block he might experience from time to time. That is a specific example and it does not rely on the definition any longer. We are now moving to part B. Adam is still in that isolated cabin in the forest and he's there to write his autobiography. But with B, we're going to explain how each of the following might relate to a chapter in Adam's book about the first time he won an award in elementary school for his writing. And we're gonna start with Erickson's stage of industry versus inferiority. In Erickson's psychosocial stage of industry versus inferiority, school-age children who experience success will emerge feeling capable of doing well and on their own. Now I'm ready to go ahead and provide a specific example about how it relates to the first time he won an award in elementary school. Since Adam won a writing award during that stage of development, he came out of it feeling capable of achieving and succeeding on his own, which means he achieved a sense of industry, also known as competency instead of inferiority. So now I've given a very specific example of something that happened to Adam and I related it back to the prompt and that is winning an award in elementary school and emerging with a state of industry or competency. I do not rely on my definition to score this. Positive reinforcement. Positive reinforcement is defined as when a behavior is followed by a desirable outcome and that increases the likelihood that the behavior will be repeated. Now, what is the behavior that we're going to be look at, looking at and giving a specific example for? Well, we know we won an award in elementary school. So let's go ahead and use that in our example. Adam's writing was positively reinforced with an award in elementary school. Okay, now that is a specific example. But the problem is the example really still relies on the definition. Because in the definition, I say the behavior will be repeated. And yet I don't yet give that. So I'll have to add a little bit to my response to get a score. Adam's writing was positively reinforced with an award in elementary school, so he continues to write throughout his life in hopes of winning another award. So I've got that continues to write, and now I know that I've addressed that behavior being repeated through positive reinforcement. Episodic memory. An episodic memory is an explicit, a declarative memory about a personal experience that typically includes details such as when, 
and where it happened. And again, we're relating this to the chapter he writes on an award he won in elementary school. So that specific example that I'm giving is Adam writes about the moment when he was called on stage to receive an award for his writing while in elementary school. This is an example of an episodic memory as it was a personally experienced event. Okay, I've got the when and the where here on stage in elementary school. So I definitely have a specific example that does not rely on the definition. Well, thank you for going through this concept application FRQ with me today. And we hope to see you at another episode of AP Psychology Review. Have a great day.